down here. We got rattlesnakes. Now you, so got, you got my water moccasins. Water here. moccasins, rattlesnakes. I'm scared. I don't like snakes. I know I'm that way. I remember uh -huh. one year I was working. At, we were uh, equalizing pallets, taking dead ones off and yep. filling it up with another pallet. I worked. I spent ten minutes working a pallet, moving right. bees off of it to fill holes. And after ten minutes, I. Of working that pallet, I lifted it up, and there was a big old uh, rattlesnake. No uh, water moccasin. Ooh. Okay. This load of bees here, they just brought it out of the field and everything. Something's already been washed over in Brooks County, and we set them back on pallets. So we'll do the same thing with those bees before we load them on the semi. Go back through, blow them off, spray Maverick on them, check everything. Okay. Um, How far is Brooks County from here, Barry? About 65 miles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So during the summer and the fall, we leave a lot of our bees there. Then we bring some of our bees from the pepper, Brazilian pepper. We bring them back here and leave them in the woods around here. Waiting on the maple here. About the only we got this time of year, here's maple. And we got some huckleberry in the river swamp. Bob, you know what huckleberry is? Yeah, we got it at home. Yeah, we got a bunch of them down in the river swamp. So. so we got a turbo here. I saw a classic. I'm I'm like a nice classic. Huh? We got two turbos and a classic. You like the turbos? Better? I like my classic. You like the classic? I do. I don't, and I don't want a joystick. joystick. I don't want anything to do with a joystick because that looks like, you know, these machines get more abuse pulling them up and down the road, yeah. these dirt roads, yeah. you know, shaking back there. So why do you, just for the fun of it, why do you prefer the classics over the turbos? I just, I mean, I, I ain't going to a road race. Yeah. I got low and high. I run by half throttle. Uh -huh. That does everything I need to do. Yeah, ours is a classic. And I'm cheap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the turbos are expensive. They are. No, ours is a classic. <laughs> the I, first, got, I got an old swinger, which we rebuilt, yeah. and then uh, got a Hummer B, and that's all we got. Bob, I think the first swinger I bought, brand new, was $21,000. And I sold it for $23,000. And now these darn Hummer Bs are up there, fifteen, sixty thousand dollars right, now. Yeah, especially the turbos. Yeah. All the single stories go to the tie tie. So that's some fall queens we put in. Yeah. So they he might run them on to the tie tie. So and we make a lot of splits with the tie tie and everything here. We try oh, not yeah. to make any perfect. With it. Yeah, it's, you just get a bunch of swarming. Get them swarming you? on it. So we try to split, split, split. Um, so just personal beekeeping questions. Do you make any effort at all to requeen colonies, or you just run them till they go bad? I tried. We look at a hive. Uh -huh. And if it's not what we want, I mean, if it gets down to just, we'll beat it out. I mean, we don't try to kill a queen. We don't look for queens to kill. You just blow them out? We blow them out. We just beat them out. Yeah. So as long as they're making honey, they As long stay. as they're making honey. And, and you know, I, we and these bees, deer, except this time of the year, probably once every three weeks. Uh, oh, so, that's pretty, that's a lot for someone like yeah. you. So we don't never stop. Our rounds never stop. We keep everything, John keeps everything, all our bee yards are on a spreadsheet. How much food do these have on them to go to California? Some's a little light. Most of them probably have 20, 25 pounds. Yeah. You can't I, most put too much, can't but put, you can't put too little. In a good year, they can plug out, you know, if, you, if, you, if they go full. And that's what we're trying to send to um, heavy ones first, because we know it's going to be a little long, but they'll have something to eat. Yeah. And the lighter ones go last of here lately, we've been, the prettier days, they've been bringing in some hate ones. And we've been putting some feed out there. Yeah. yeah, a lot of guys don't know there's a little bit of a gamble here in the California. The pink one. <clears throat> These bees could get to the line out there and they couldn't, they might not let me in to California. And that's the reason we're doing all this, satisfied the Californians. Well, if they see something this clean, they're satisfied that you're conscientious. I feel like it does a good job. Yeah. Keep everything clean instead of gambling and not getting checked. Yeah. So every one of our, every load we do, we do like this. Okay, so what are you getting paid this year? I think we get 180. 180, I think. And then how much of that is the broker getting? That's fine. Oh, that's, that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think it's 180. I know some of the rest of them is getting a little more with all these other other outfits or organizations with the Be Hero and the Be Wise and stuff. But yeah, but you got a good man out I've there. Got a good, I've yeah. got a guy that's taking care of me since I've been out there. Yeah. And I'm going to take care of him. Keep her nets folded up so we know exactly how to unroll them on top of the semi. 
And when we, so we unroll them, everything spreads out. Top boards for the semis. Takes 14 boards per semi for us, so we do it with 14 two by sixes. Uh -huh. And we buy the nets off the interweb for oh, yeah. $600 a set, I think, or six, $700 a set. So, uh, do you use the same truckers or so, brokers? Dave, we got three or four that has pulled for us ever since for seven years, I think. Okay. But then we have to get some just more truckers. So I got a couple of good trucking brokers that get this up. Good truck. Good guy. How much a mile this year? It's about 325 to 350 a mile. Oh, that's not too bad. That's not terrible. No. So, I think there's a lot more empty trucks set down the road nowadays than what it have been in the past couple of years. Because during the COVID, I think a lot of people went to the trucking business. Yeah. And now there's a lot of extra trucks out. That's what one of the brokers told me. Well, it's for a while right there, the price per mile was through the roof. Roof, $4 plus a mile. That's tough when you, 2,500. When you're talking about $10,000 one way to California. Is that what it's gonna be this year? About 9,200. 9,200. 10,000 back. So you got 20,000 off the top of a load of bees yeah. to start with. Yeah. Okay, before. I'm going to ask you a personal question, okay. and I already know the answer, but I know I know what you're going to say, but okay. I want to hear you okay. say it on film. Can you make a living keeping bees? You know, I always wonder, think about that. <clears throat> can you make a living? I can't, we can, and we do it good, but we. it's not about making a living for me. It's about enjoying the bees. And But yeah, it, it takes hard. I wish I was back at about six or 700 highs with one truck and one tractor. I think I can make more money. Oh, really? I do. Because I, you get so many bees, it's hard to get around to them in a timely fashion sometimes. And sometimes they swarm and sometimes they starve to death. Yeah. I, you know, like I said, we don't try to get over the 5,000 number. We try to keep them between four and 5,000. And with this little crowd right here, they make a good living, I make a good living, and we all happy. Yeah. Even though we grumble sometimes. Yeah. Like this time of the year, usually my guys would go to work at daylight. Uh -huh. in the morning. So we either getting trucks ready or we in the field. It's, well, it's 110 degrees heat index down here during the summer. Yeah. So we go to work early. By 2 or 3 o'clock, they go going home. So, and, you know, they have to do anything in the afternoons. And I got a good bunch of guys and, and my son. And that's just, it works good for all of us. Okay, even so uh, Jeff Stalvey told us you got a pretty nice boat. Yeah. I do a lot of offshore fishing. Like as in down the coast of Florida? Down the coast of Florida, the... Bahamas, the so Gulf of Mexico. So you don't do that on a dinghy? No, sir. I got a, a good little boat. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 that's my pride and joy. Yeah. But we're going to load these bees out this afternoon. I hope y'all stay around this afternoon. We will. I want to take okay. some pictures of this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for the time you're taking. I'm I know you're a busy man. We've been talking about this for, what, a year or two? two yeah, two years, yeah. yeah. Uh, it'd be a good day. We couldn't pick a better day, I don't think. Okay. Can't help but notice that the majority of your trucks have, I guess, deer guards. Is there a reason for that? Deer guards and people guards. We mean people guards. <coughs> well, one guy ran in the back of one truck. Oh, you mean driver guards? Driver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you weren't running over <coughs> people. Okay. That, there was a deer guard. Clear. I bumped toward the bumper up with a deer, so I put that back on there. This one to put a winch in. And I got another one with a winch on it because of a deer. But yeah. we hit a lot of deer around here. Oh, yeah, down here. It's, yeah. Even my other truck I drive has got a ranch hand on it. And this has got a big 16,000 pound winch on it. So it gets muddy and wet. We don't have ideal conditions down here. No, you don't. We, when we get through a cow, getting bees shipped to California, we'll have some bees left here for blueberry pollination. But I always pick the fields I go to in blueberry pollination because I like to be another crop around like Tai Tai or something they can work besides just blueberry pollen and get blueberry pollen. I like my bees to be able to get other stuff besides just the agriculture crop they go into work. And that's the same thing with anything. I don't like it just to carry it to one crop that's gonna pollinate one crop and get one kind of pollen. Probably the only crop we do that with is almonds. Yeah, and because almond it's a, pollen is pretty nutritious. Almond pollen, is, the protein is really nutritious for the bees. So. so most guys report coming out of the blueberries in worse shape than they went in. In places you will, because you don't have the other pollen right there that's good. And yeah. the protein, the pollen in that blueberry right there, I don't think is as good as what we could get out there in the nat natural. Okay. We got everything in California, we split in here, so we need to keep some around the house here for Titans splitting bees. We got queens coming from Hawaii, got queens coming from <clears throat> South Florida and Queen sales. 
the end of February, you say. All these Fords have diesels in them? Every one of them has six sevens. 6.7, yeah. No problems with them. I could do a Ford commercial some days. Huh? I could do a Ford you, commercial. Oh, you'd be a good uh, spokesman for spokesman, Ford? Spokesman, yeah. It's funny how people That's have different experiences. They are really being meticulous when it comes to getting these pallets clean. They're brushing them off as they lift them again. Very careful. Stretch axle semi. The axles has always got to be trucks always got to be pulled in California with axles as far forward as they can. Okay. So he's got to spread out. I mean, so he can move his axle on the back of the truck. Yeah, he's got to have them forward. He's got to have them forward. So we try to keep all the weight to the front of the truck. So are you going to get 480 on this no, truck? It's already on there. Nice to have a board on every pallet, but not all drivers do that. Some will skip every other pallet, which I kind of never really like the idea of. I, just like we do on our smaller trucks, so I like to have something on every row of pallets.
cooling down, John. Yeah. yeah. Cooling down fast. Okay, they are going to staple some stuff. I like to leave these when it's cool. Oh yeah. They yeah. kind of settle down and just... You know, this is actually a good time of day. As the sun's going down, yeah, the bees right. go into kind of a quieter mode. Right. They're less aggressive, yeah. and uh, this is the perfect time. Nice to and then, of course, you're, you're going to be done before it gets pitch black, and that's yeah. good, too. <laughs> Nobody wants to be doing this stuff in the dark. Right. That's the last thing I want to do. Yeah. So these nets belong to this driver? Yeah, them's Dwayne's nets. So. Pardon me? The Dwayne's nets, yeah. There's his nets. Okay. We got 10 foot, this same size nets, but ours are 10 foot drops, multicolor stuff. Mm -hmm. But most of the drivers this year so far has had their nets. There's a lot of drivers out there that got bee nets now. Well, they're figuring out there's a little more, more money there That's hauling right. bees than right. normal freight. <clears throat> but he runs California a lot, anyhow, with military equipment. Okay, so he's got a way back out of California. Oh, exactly. yeah. That's a big deal. A lot of there's not there's too many bees going into California, and not enough no. loads coming back. I've had trucks to go sit at the port for a week waiting on waiting bees. on something. Yeah, I've yeah. had unload bees. They hoping they could run to a port right there and get something. Yeah. And years ago, you could easy. I don't think you can as easy now. Huh. So just looking at the, it looks like a 53 foot trailer. If yeah. it was a shorter trailer, he might not have been able to do that. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what we just, we have to be careful on what trailers we bring in here. Because I need 480 on every load going out. Yeah. So if you had to, if you had a flat trailer, um, would the 480 fit okay? I stack them just like that. Yeah. For <clears throat> four from beginning to end, yeah. That's according to where the driver wants to be centered the way that. Like yesterday's load, yesterday orange load, he wanted me to, he said, tell me where to start at. And I just ran it out and stopped right there. Started at the back? Started at where he started, yeah, and got the weight where he wanted it. Yeah. So this is your <coughs> sixth load and tomorrow's your seventh? No, this is my fourth load. Oh, fourth load, okay. So we're just getting started. But we'll, I mean, it's, it'll be over with and... Yeah, yeah. You got a good crew here. Everybody knows what to do, and yeah. nobody has to talk and much. Um, T. Bass's little grandson. Pardon me. The little boy right there. Yeah. is T. Bass's grandson. His grandson. Oh, okay. So he comes helps us after school a little bit. Oh, yeah. Bees for Start him young. Start him young. Uh, why don't you take a picture of that uh, that net label there? So get real close and get the phone number and stuff. <coughs> we got a place on the internet. We might see for now. Oh, yeah. John Houston, what does a set of them nets cost after you buy? The 10 foot drops? Huh? The 10 foot drop nets, how much are they? A set? $520 something, I think. For both of them? Yeah. $520? Yeah. That seems pretty reasonable. This seems good. Yeah. Yeah, last time I loaded a semi was probably four years ago, and the driver refused to get out of the truck. And I'm like, what is, what is this? You know? <coughs> And he couldn't speak English. Oh, that's what just gets me. And, uh, I'd have to call a dispatcher. Then the shit had yeah. a freeway with them. I, I can't understand all that. Mess. So he's doing what I like to do, and that is put one twist in the strap so it won't vibrate in the wind. Um, I got a comment from somebody in another country. It might have been Australia. I don't remember. Somewhere out of the U.S. saying that. In their country, they won't allow you to put a twist in the strap. And I found that puzzling because I don't think it makes the strap any weaker. I really don't. But that'll keep them from vibrating in the wind. Let's go talk to this guy. Do you like hauling bees? Uh, no. You don't like hauling bees, so... No, I don't like doing... You know, I used to do them a lot. But the only reason I do these is... You know, I mean, I've been on Barry for a while. So. Oh, so it's a, it's a yeah. friend thing. So, okay. yeah, I just kind of do it. He's the only somebody I hold these for. Okay. Yeah. Some guys run straps end to end, like two straps down the middle. And that works too, but this, I like the Xing better because it kind of holds the net real well. Y'all had to come back when it's hot. 
and no, we don't. Honey. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> I've been down here and pulled honey in that heat. I don't want to do that anymore. Well, man, thanks for thank you letting us spend the day I've with you. Here and spent the day with me. It was beautiful. I had to come back. I had a wonderful day with you guys, and uh, uh, I wish I could see you more than every yeah. one or two years. You kind of live at one end of the state, yeah, you know. and I live at the very bottom. Yeah, it kind of so, works out that way. We're always busy. I'll probably see you at a bee meeting or yeah, something I'll somewhere. I'll catch up. We'll catch up. Y'all need to come back. Bring the crew right here. We're pulling the engine. Okay.